so this is the gumpy, and uh, we have one kilo of gumpy here, and the gumpy has been uh, sitting for about three weeks in water. And every week I uh, have been replacing the old water with new water, um, and this helps soften the fiber before cooking it. Um, it is not necessary to soak it for so long. You can see it's already starting to kind of come apart. So the gumpy uh, start to come apart, and this actually helps the cooking process. It speeds it up. So we soak it for a couple weeks. Now we're going to pour off the water. It's rather stinky. One kilogram of uh, gumpy. We are going to mix up 12 liters of water and um, 200 grams of washing soda. Okay. So here we have six liters of water. Here we have six liters more of water. And then uh, we take the washing soda. Um, and you're going to measure out roughly. There's a hundred. Almost. It's about a hundred and seventy-five. Um, we want to add the washing soda to the water when the water is cold. So here we add a little bit more, so I'm adding it. Side. Um, it's good to wear gloves because it's caustic. So, then we mix it up in cold water, mix, mix. I'm going to turn on my stove. And uh, start to boil the water. I'm going to go ahead and add the dumpy right to the pot. Um, and we are going to cook the dumpy for about three hours, okay? So, it is now boiling. And we stir it and let it cook for now two more hours. So our cook has been about uh, three hours total. Um, the way that we check it is that we kind of uh, spread the fiber open, and this is perfect. It's kind of almost melting in my hands. So uh, this is ready, it is finished, and we can then move on to the next step of beating it. Uh, so, we're going to strain out the washing soda, and then I'm going to rinse it um, for about 20 minutes in water to get rid of any of the washing soda, okay? So this is very important. So the first thing I do is I'm going to pick this up, and 
you're going to pour it into the strainer. And you can see it straining. Keeping it in the strainer, we just put it in the sink and we're going to run the water for about 20 minutes and just let the, uh, the water uh, do its trick. To make Japanese paper, it's very important uh, to mix up some formation agent. Uh, this is something that makes the water thicker and it allows you to um, make very thin sheets of paper. It slows the drainage and uh, it's very important for the Japanese paper making technique. So we buy this formation agent uh, from Eiffel Tor Mool uh, outside of Cologne. And to mix it up, we take our blender, um, we take um, about three liters of water, we're going to pour the water into the blender. And then for every liter of water, we are going to add a scoop, maybe about a tablespoon of this formation agent to the blender. And so since we have three liters of water, we're going to add three dollops. Okay? It doesn't have to be that precise. If you add more of the formation agent uh, to less water, it'll just be thicker. And the most important part is that you use a blender. So then we put the cover on the blender, and then we turn the blender on. <laughs> we plug it in first. <laughs> So now, <laughs> so now we turn it on. Uh, we blend it for about a minute. The formation agent uh, has to sit for 24 hours before it is fully mixed. So we take the lid off and then we take this off and you can see it's kind of a frothy mess. And so what we're going to do is now pour it into a bucket that has a strainer in it. This allows us to strain out any clumps. And right now it is kind of slimy, but it's not fully mixed. And so we let it sit for 24 hours before we use it. Okay? Always putting a lid on it and sealing it. And we let it sit. So uh, I have rinsed it for 20 minutes in running water, and now we want to beat it. And so <clears throat> to beat the fiber, first we strain it to get rid of uh, a fair amount of the water. Uh, we don't want to squish out all the water because we need some hydration. Put it back into the bucket, separate the water here, and then we don't want to beat all of it at once. Uh, so we're basically going to break it up into uh, small pieces about the size 
maybe of a small loaf of bread. Here's our small loaf of bread um, that we have. If you want to be really fussy, you can pick out all of the outer bark, um, but I'm not fussy, so we will keep that in. <clears throat> so here's our gompi, and uh, what we're going to do now is you're just going to take sticks. It could be any kind of stick. It could be a baseball bat. It could be mallets. What have you. It doesn't matter. Here's just some basic extra sticks I have lying around the studio. Starting with our small loaf of bread. Uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, we're basically going to take the sticks and starting in the center, we're going to pound it. starting in the center and kind of moving one direction and then back across. And now uh, I'm going to take this loaf of bread and I'm going to smash it back together gently with my sticks and then I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and then I'm going to do the same thing. If you see that it starts to get a little bit dry, we just add a little bit of water uh, in there. It's very important to have the water, some water because basically it helps uh, the fibers uh, separate. And again and now I'm going to take uh, my sticks and take this loaf of bread, gumpy bread here and I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees again and I'm going to pound it more. Shake it up vigorously, and we look at it, and let's see, it stops. It's very nice and even, we don't see any big chunks, so our pulp is ready. After about 20 minutes or so of hammering the gumpy, it is ready. So what we have here now is a uh, basin that is full of water, just normal water, and from uh, yesterday, we, we mixed up our slime, which we want to add some slime to our water. This uh, formation agent, as it's called, um, is very important to add to the basin, uh, to our vat. So here is the slime. We're going to filter it of any 
kind of undissolved chunks. And you can see it's very, very slim. There's. So here I'm going to add a couple of scoops. It's, <laughs> it's really slimy. I have to be careful not to get this on the floor because it will trip you up. So here we go. What we don't use back in here, you always want to keep, uh, store your formation agent with a, a lid on top and uh, in a cool, dry place. So here now I'm going to mix up my formation agent. Mix very vigorously. And it should make like a kind of a slimy noise. If I add too much slime, we just add more water. So we have quite a bit of slime. I'm going to add a little bit more water. So here I just add some more water. And mix it up again. Should kind of have the consistency of maybe warm honey or even maple syrup. Okay, so that's the slime. Now We want to add our pulp. So the first thing we do is we add the formation agent and then we add the pulp. I take a scoop of pulp. You'll see that the pulp kind of globs together because the formation agent is really holding it together. We add maybe three big scoops. The more pulp you add, obviously the thicker the sheet will be. So here's four. That's pretty good. So now I'm going to very aggressively mix it up. We can add our sampler. So we're mixing. Okay. So the traditional tool for a paper, uh, Japanese paper maker would be something different. Uh, so we are actually going to, we, <laughs> um, a traditional tool for uh, the, the Japanese paper maker is something different than this. This is actually a Western mold. And so uh, we are actually going to be making paper, uh, forming the sheets of paper in more of a Western tradition, which is called Tenzuki. Um, we will do this because it's easier. And for what we're doing, it's fine. So you mix up your, your fiber in the formation agent. We take our mold and our deco and we put them together. Um, we are going to, instead of pulling the sheet towards us, we're actually going to scoop it away from us. And we're going to dip it in the water, grab some of that pulp, and then very gently rock it back and forth a few times and then let the pulp settle on the screen. What the formation agent is doing is it's slowing the drainage of the water, which allows the fibers to lay out in a long uh, formation. And so in this way, um, we are able to get very thin but strong sheets of paper. So I'm going to dip it again, starting from the back of the basin here, or the part of the basin that's closer to me. I'm going to scoop it, grab some of that water, and I'm just going to gently rock it back and forth. Gently rock it back and forth. And then just allow the pulp to settle onto the frame. Okay, so it's a little bit different. You can kind of see uh, here that I'm getting more pulp. I don't know if you can kind of see it. It's 
it's a little bit thicker on this edge because that's the edge I'm grabbing the pulp on. So if this happens, you can actually just rotate the whole mold and then scoop it from this side again. Scooping and then gently rocking it back and forth. And then allowing it to settle on there. So that was three scoops. And I think that's probably going to be enough. So now we are going to take the decal off of the mold and you'll be able to see the sheet of paper. So three dips for this is perfect. Uh, if we wanted to go thinner, we would only go two or one. If we wanted to go thicker, we might go four or five. So every time you dip it, you're adding more pulp to the top. So um, to determine the thickness that you want, you basically do a couple dips, you look at it, say, yes, this is what I want, and you would crunch it. We're going to now cooch the sheet of paper onto some interfacing uh, here. So cooching is going to be the same exact way. We have let it drain a little bit and now we are going to gently lower it down onto our piece of interfacing. We're going to push down onto the back of the ribs here. Uh, because this is our first sheet, I'm actually going to massage between the ribs try to push it into contact with our interfacing um, and hopefully this will work. So I push down again and then I open it up like a book and you can see the sheet of paper has now been transferred to this interfacing. Okay, and then I take my mold and I bring it over here. Um, and then I put another piece of interfacing over the top and I'm going to build a post in this way. At the end of the day we will press this uh, and then we will hang these to dry. Ready? Yeah. So now we have finished making our sheets of paper and we're going to press it. So pressing is very important because it squishes the water out of the paper, which speeds up the drying. <clears throat> it also pushes the fibers closer together, which makes a stronger paper. The more pressure you can give the paper, the stronger the paper. So here we're giving it 20 tons of pressure, and you can see the water is coming out. So we will press it for a few minutes here and let the water come out and then we will hang it to dry. Here, we are going to take the post right out. Take the uh, paper off with the interfacing attached. And we're going to hang it up here to dry. Kind of like hanging your clothing to dry. Kind of gently pulling it up, and it doesn't really matter which way they're facing. 
Uh, if you hang things to dry, they generally will dry in a matter of a day or two. If you want to speed up the drying, you can turn on a fan to circulate the air. Ah, oh, okay, so our Japanese paper is dry, um, and now I'm going to peel it off, and you can see how nice and light and translucent it is. Um, the Gampi is not as high of a quality as the Kozo or the Mitsumata, but it makes a really beautiful, translucent, and very strong sheet of paper. So. Um, I'm going to go ahead and peel off all of the sheets that we made the other day. And this is very simple. Um, traditionally, the Japanese would have left them, uh, they would not have put them onto the interfacing. They would have just cooched them on top of each other. But uh, here we're just peeling off the interfacing. You can even see the ones that have holes or that um, maybe got damaged uh, because we were still learning how to do it. Um, they still look really beautiful and you can still use them uh, for bookbinding, guarding or mending in bookbinding or in other processes. So you can see here again that the paper just peels right off of the interfacing and then we're going to put it into a pile.